back to the cave. This global economic crisis has hit millions of people over the last 10 years, me being one of them. People have lost their money, their jobs, their businesses, their homes. It's going to take a long time to recover, that it, if it is ever does, it seems like it could go on forever. Nobody seems to have an idea when all will be good again. Every day prices are rising with the cost of houses way out of range for the average man or even the well-paid man. It is amazing how little half a million pounds is worth these days in this market. Top economists are giving different prognoses all the time and definitely don't instill in level of confidence in what the future has to offer. What sort of world am I going to bring my children into and to be honest, do I even want to put them through what I had to go through? This chaos has destroyed people mentally, psychologically and economically. It has left thousands of people depressed and some even feeling like there was no other option than to commit suicide. All around me I see people losing their houses, their jobs and even their businesses. Some people blame the bankers, others blame the government. But in the end, what does it matter whose fault it is when we just keep suffering? We cannot individually pull all nations out of disrepair, but we can start to change the directions of our lives. Capitalism is crumbling and we need to find an alternative. We need to try and build a fair society that works for everyone. If only a small percentage of the world could change their way of thinking from what they can get out of life to what they can contribute to back to it when things might start change a hell of a lot quicker. But sadly the 5% who hold the majority of the world's wealth are not really the sharing type. When the recession started, nobody knew it would be so hard and so deep. Now nobody can tackle this problem or seems to have an answer to it all. I think the people all the world feel like the good old days are gone forever. What no one realized that the time was once you climb to the top of the Everest, you are going to have to climb down again sooner or later. This is a very sensitive subject for me. I am one of the victims of this global economic crisis. And under a year ago, I lost everything. I was working one of the biggest companies in the country. Everything was perfect. I was getting an amazing wage. I had a big and beautiful car, a lovely house and a beautiful wife. I had the picture perfect luxury life. I felt untouchable. I had no idea the direction my life was about to take and could not have been less prepared. The credit crunch hit my company hard. This was the first domino in a long line to fall, with the last ones to go nearly cost me my life. With my company's earnings dropping every day, it was inevitable they, they would have to make cuts, and many of the workers of company would lose their job. But I never once guessed that mine would be one of them. I tried so hard to find other work, but I just couldn't get a job. Within no time at all, I spent all my savings, then things really started to spiral out of control. I began to have a lot of arguments with my wife, and one day I came home to find her things packed and her walking out of door. With the love of my life gone, I felt like I had lost everything, but I still had lower to go. The next thing was my beautiful car which I had to sell to keep bailiffs away. Even then I was still drowning in debt and had no way to escape it. Faced with no other option, the house had to go, and soon after I fell into deep depression that dragged me under and I found myself living in the streets. I was homeless, when only a year before I had been flying high in the executive rooms at the top of Wall Street. I had no idea how to survive on my own, when I had no money to buy myself out of the problems. I was helpless. I never knew that life could be so hard and so difficult. I had no perception of quite how dependent I was on the money I had squandered for so many years. After a short while of sleeping on the streets, my mental health began to deteriorate and I was falling apart at the seams 
I couldn't deal with life or the world. I had found myself so vulnerable and lost in it. In moment of clarity, I began to reevaluate everything in my life, realizing my total lack of independence and self-sufficiency. Something had to change, or I would die in these this miserable streets. My mind drifted back to thinking about the way people lived before the money game came into play. It was a much simpler life living of the land and relying solely on their skills and knowledge to keep them alive. I realized that this was the only path I could trade that would give me purpose back in my life and pick me up when I had no other option. I felt like forerunner of many that would follow in my footsteps. I could feel capitalism crumbling all around me and all the people crying out for another option. I mentally prepared for the long walk out of civilization and got myself ready for the journey I was soon to make. I walked out the city heading north into the endless of forests that surrounding it. I no longer felt like a destitute failure. I was a revolutionary. There was one phrase that rolled around in my head as I walked and it was the one of words of the one of the world's greatest revolutionaries. A tiny man from India that went to the name of Gandhi and once he said, be the change if you want to see in the world. And that was exactly what I was doing and it felt good. After four days of walking, I arrived in the edge of the forest. My last pennies of the English currency were spent on a small sandwich. After that, I was on my own. I ventured deeper and deeper into the forest. Before I finally found the spot, I was soon to call my home. I had once seen documentary about how an Amazonian tribe built their shelter. So with a rough blueprint in my mind, I got to work. It was exhausting gathering all the huge branches and sticks that would form the roof and walls. I was so unfit and it was killing me, trying to get everything into place on my own. I could feel the rains coming and the sun starting to get lower in the sky. So many times I nearly gave up, but it fought on try to have it get started before dark, so I could get a proper night's sleep after days of walking in the rain and cold. Just before dark, I took a step back to see what I had created, and I felt quite proud. It may not be much, but it was a house that I had built, and what was a sense of achievement unlike anything I had experienced for a long while. The moment I stopped my hunger down on me, and it was a time to use my last comfort card and eat the sandwich that I had saved for so long. This was the last food of the city I was to eat in a long while. I was ravenous tearing off huge bit of it and not even stopping to breathe. It tastes so good and for those brief moments everything felt okay and I was glad everything that had happened in my life to take me to this point. But this moment of joy soon passed when I realized that it's not so easy to make a fire without a lighter. I spent well over an hour trying with everything in my power to get spark, but with no luck, the reality dawned on me. I was probably going to have a long road of suffering to come. I gave up to the night and tried to make myself comfortable, preparing for a bitter cold night in the great outdoors. The cold started to penetrate my bones and freeze me from the inside. As the night went on, the fear began to engulf me. There was the sound of scuttling and screeching and all number of foreign sounds to my city airs coming from every direction. I didn't sleep a wink that night. Many months passed and spring had finally arrived. It amazed how great a teacher suffering can sometimes be. 
Since arrived in my new life, I could never have imagined how much I would have learned. In this small amount of time reaching a point where I had all my needs met and would even go as far as to say that I felt like I had an abundance of everything all around me. I was living like a king. I had taught myself how to hunt each morning going out to set traps and collect the catch of the previous day. I had even began to grow my own vegetables out in the clearing in the forest. I took great pleasure in this whole process, the slow and steady cultivation of patience as I waited for them to grow. I had even found a crystal clear lake where I could bath and drink from. It was so fresh and naturally icy cold. I cherished my trips down to the lake, sitting peacefully watching the animals coming down to its edge to wet their pallets. During these times, I felt totally at peace and part of the stream of life. With the extra time I had, I could take opportunity to explore the more artistic side of my character. I found a lot of solace in working with the sculpture, carving beautiful creation out of the materials of the forest. I would windle the afternoons away, relaxing in the shade of my bivouac reading and writing, processing my thoughts and making time to breathe. Through a point of ultimate desperation, I had found a way of life that nourished my soul in ways I could never imagine. My feeling connected to my surroundings and allowed these surroundings to provide me with everything I need to survive. I found a whole new respect for the nature and the world we live in. Some people would consider my life that of an animal or poor man. I felt rich in ways words cannot describe. I was finally human and had found a path to the future, not only for myself, but for all the civilized world. However magnificent our advance in these development countries have been, we must be able to see that this way of the life is not making us happy. We have more choice than we ever have done, and we have never been so unhappy. It's time to make the transition. Just don't make the same mistake I made and wait until it's nearly too late. Begin the preparation and begin to learn what you need to know to be free. There is hope for the future and it's in your hands. So take my story as an opportunity for awakening. Take those first steps towards making this beautiful planet for yourself and so many generations to come. Be the change.